So if we have an array that's filled with consecutive integers, but they're unsorted, what is the minimum number of swaps it takes to put it in ascending order? Most people, when they look at the solution, are going to be drawn to some sort of brute force method where they're iterating over the array again and again and again. This turns out to be quite inefficient, especially when you scale it up to like 10 to the seventh characters, or excuse me, 10 to the seventh integers. Now, there is a better solution that involves graphs, and it turns out that it actually has a time complexity of n log n. So for those of you who don't know what computer science graph is, it's quite simple actually. It's just a collection of nodes and their connections, which are called edges. Now, if you have an edge that has an arrow to it, that means it's got a direction to it, and you can't travel the opposite direction. So in this case, zero points to one. One does not point to zero. You can't travel from one to zero because there's no arrow with a, in, from one pointing at a zero. If you have a section of a graph where you travel along and you end up in the same position you were at, well, we call that a cycle because no matter how many times I travel along this, going zero, one, two, back to zero, I'm never gonna get to the other nodes three, four, five, and six. As it turns out, there's actually a unique property in these cycles where if you have zero, one, and two, and it's in a cycle like this, the minimum number of swaps it takes to put zero, one, and two in the correct order, if they're all in the wrong spot, is two. And how do I get this? Well, it is the length of the cycle, minus one. So in this case, I have three edges, so one, two, and three. That's our length. Minus one is two. So if I have the list, I don't know, let's say uh, two, one, zero, it would take me exactly, in best case scenario, two swaps to put them in the correct order, zero, one, and two. Now using this idea, we can actually iterate through this list one time and take a look at all the subcycles that exist in it and then add up the minimum number of swaps it takes to uh, sort those little subcycles and that gives you your answer. Now this turns out to actually be pretty efficient because as you move along and pass through a cycle, you never have to touch it again because you know that no other numbers are going to go to that cycle. So as it turns out, you have to do fewer and fewer and fewer checks the farther and farther and farther along you get in your array. Now before you do this, you want to initialize some sort of Boolean array that is the same length as your original array because that allows you to check, have I looked at a number already? If I've looked at a number already and I'm coming from somewhere else, that means that I've found a cycle and that's your end condition so you don't have to keep iterating over the same cycle again and again and again. So let me show you how this works, and then we'll uh, go into Notepad over here and look at some Python code for it. So I'm at zero. Is zero in the correct spot? Yes, it is. It's in the zeroth part of the array. So it loops to itself, and there should actually be an arrow here. There we go. So no matter how many times I loop through this, I'm always going to be end up at zero. So in my Boolean array over here, hey, I say, hey, I'm at zero. I've looked there and then I come back to zero and say, I've already looked there, that means I have a cycle. So in this case, this cycle length is one because there's exactly one edge. So the number of swaps needed would be one minus one, which is zero. Is that correct? Yeah, the zero doesn't need to be moved. It doesn't need to be swapped. So let's move on to the next part. Two, is two in the correct spot? No, it's not. And that's because it's in the spot where the one should be. Where does the two want to be? Well, it wants to be where the three is. So we can actually draw our part of our directed graph this way, because the two wants to be where the three is. So we've also checked off, hey, we've looked at the two. Now the three's here. Where does the three want to be? Well, the three wants to be where the four is. So we draw from the three to the four in our graph. Where does the four want to be? The four wants to be actually where the one is. So it moves over here. Where does the one want to be? Well, the one actually wants to be where the two is. But remember, we have our Boolean graph, right? Or excuse me, our Boolean array. So when I come back to the two, I say, hey, I've already checked this two before. That means that I found a cycle because no matter how many times I go through this, I'm always gonna end up back at two. So here's our cycle right here. What's the length of it? One, two, three, and four. So that means that the minimum number of swaps to get these four numbers, which are 
out of order is three because it's four minus one. So now we've got one plus three, or excuse me, is zero plus three. Now we move to the next element that we have not checked yet because we don't need to check any other elements here again because we found a cycle, we know they're gonna go back to the same numbers. So there's no point in checking them again, which is the six now, we're gonna go to the six. Is the six in the correct spot? No, it's not. Where does it want to be? It wants to be where the five is. So we're going to draw from our six to our five an edge. Now we take a look at the five. Where does the five want to be? It wants to be where the six is. So we go back to the six. Have I checked the six already? I have. So that means I found a cycle right here. Now I look at the length of that. So it's one, two. So the total number of swaps it takes to change two numbers we know is one. So now when I add these all together, I get zero plus three plus one, which is four. So the minimum number of swaps it takes to solve this thing and put it in the correct order is four. And I know to stop because my little Boolean array over here, I finally hit a point where all of them have been checked. All of them have been checked. So there's no need for me to keep iterating over them. Now let's go take a look at some code for this. Here's some simple Python code for it. Now I've spaced it out right here just for made it a little easier to understand and uh, view. So I have a counter. This counter right here is going to be our swap counter. Now I want to take the length of the array that I put in because I need that. Now I want to create an array dictionary. Now this dictionary is going to be a key value dictionary. So I'm going to use Python's enumerate, which all it does is it just spits out a tuple with the index that an item is in and then the actual item itself. So what I want to do is I want to create a dictionary where the uh, item itself points to the spot that it actually is in. Then from there, I'm going to create my little Boolean array, my little Boolean list right here. So this allows me when I'm going through, I can change certain spots to true. So that way I can figure out if I'm in a cycle or not. So now that we've done this little pre-processing thing right here, we're actually going to iterate exactly one time through the thing. As you can see, there's exactly one for loop right here. So we're only iterating through each element one time. Now we might jump back to another element when we're checking for a, uh, a cycle, but we're only going to add our master loop is only going through one time. So for key value in sorted, we're going to sort this thing into the correct order based on the keys. So we're going to put the, uh, the items in their correct order, but we know that they're not in the correct spots yet. Now, if we uh, take a Python dictionary and use items, what's it going to do? It's going to spit out a tuple of key value pairs. So if I had like the zero in the zero spot, the first element that came out would be zero, zero. But since it's spitting out a tuple, I only want to sort by the keys. So I'm going to use a, a sort key. So I have my uh, lambda x, where x is the tuple that comes in. And I want to sort by the first element of that tuple. So if I have 0, 0, like, that's not 0, like 0 like this, my sorting algorithm is going to look only at the first element, not the second one when it's sorting this. So now we go through. Have we checked it? If we have checked it, then we don't need to look at it. Or if the key is already in its correct spot, then we don't need to look at it as well. So we're just gonna continue and move on to the next element. Now, let's say for example, we get past this point. Well, we wanna say that our cycle count, the, the actual length of the cycle is zero. Now we're gonna set our value equal to our key and you'll see why in a second, because while we haven't checked this value, we're gonna say, yes, we have checked this value because we have now moved to that point in that node. And then we are going to find the spot where that value wants to go. And that's creating one direction in our graph. And then we increment the count. So we're gonna keep going through this right here. It's gonna keep going. It's gonna find an element. It's gonna find where it wants to go and then check that element and find where it wants to go, blah, 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 until we finally point back to ourself. When we point back to ourself, we break. We say, hey, counter, we found a cycle. We want you to add the count 
of that cycle, minus one, and then return it when it's finally done. So watch what happens when I return this and I, uh, when I run this. So this is the exact same list or array that we talked about just a second ago. If I run this, you'll notice that the answer is four, which is correct. That's what we got before. Now, what if we wanted to check? Let's put in a uh, already sorted one. Zero, one, two, three, four, five, six. Close that off. Save. So this is already in the correct order. There's no cycle to this, right? We go through this whole thing. There's no cycle whatsoever, actually. We should get an answer of zero, right? Because there's no swaps needed. And boom, zero. Now, if you wanted to change this into descending order, there's a couple of ways you can do it, but really you just need to kind of work backwards and just define the new spot where you want to have an element get put. But that's about it. If you have any questions whatsoever, please leave a comment. Um, that's about it. Thank you.